Woodbridge, located in Northern Virginia, a population of around 5,000 people and a median household income of $113,000. It was in 2016, a crime that took place which shocked the city. But there's a wider question to be had. Are things predetermined or do we make choices in what we do? Are our life experiences going to shape everything we do or is that irrelevant and do we choose everything in the moment? Determinism versus free will. Let's get into the story. On August the 5th, police received notice of a missing female in the Lake Ridge area. Lake Ridge is statistically the fourth safest neighborhood in the city. Erica Hickson was an employee at 12311 Pond Run Drive in the city of Woodbridge when she went missing. She worked for Intercept Youth Services. This was the same organization and the same office as Lizeth Lopez, who was reported missing a few weeks prior. Welcome to the devious story of Ronald Francis Dorsey Jr. Lizeth was eventually located deceased near a drainage ditch close to the office location due to very similar circumstances of both cases Miss Hickson was considered to be in danger and a full search effort was put into place. The search effort included various resources such as the Prince William County Search and Rescue Team as well as multiple Prince William County Police Detectives. Federal agents were also called for help who conducted a massive canvas and search of the area. The police first spoke with other employees and residents of the youth program. This is because there was nothing linking the two victims other than them both working at the same location. Inside the office were multiple employees as well as current residents of the Youth Intercept Services program. The police decided that since all of the employees as well as all of the residents who were already inside of the building and were in one place, it was best to leave them in there instead of moving them. You see, the police were trying to determine if the program office was a crime scene. The police first spoke with Mary Lyons, who was a supervisor of the program and the leasee for all the apartments in the program. The police received permission from the supervisor to search all the apartments and were told they'd have the full support of the program employees in helping find the missing individual. So the FSS Bureau arranged to search all the apartments whilst all the residents were sent to the main office for further questions. The police spoke with an employee named Elliot Lewis and he was asked to give a rundown of his day on the 4th of August 2016. Elliot said, the last thing he did at 5 p.m. was drop Ronald Dorsey at workforce before he went home. Nobody at that time was on duty as Miss Hickson was scheduled to start her shift at 6 p.m. Elliot confirmed he had no contact with Miss Hickson neither by phone nor in person. Elliot told police he went home to his wife and two children. It was a normal evening and he went to bed around 10.30 p.m. He did mention he woke up in the middle of the night to miss calls from the night shift employee Amber Segura. When he called her back, she said she arrived for work around 11.45pm and Miss Hickson was nowhere to be found. She did say Miss Hickson's purse was in the main office and her vehicle was parked in front of the office. Amber told Elliot she did a check of the residents and all of them were in their apartments and accounted for. Elliot then tried to call Miss Hickson's phone but twice it went to voicemail. When Elliot couldn't get through, he went to the office and learnt that the police had already been called. Elliot was furious he was upset as he felt 
it was too early for the police to be involved. Elliot told police that it was a resident named Keisha that had called the police because she was concerned when Miss Hickson did not show up for her evening check like she normally did. The police asked Elliot if he knew anyone that saw Miss Hickson that evening and he said that Amber told him that Ronald Dorsey saw Miss Hickson around 8pm that evening. They asked Elliot what would Miss Hickson be doing as part of her duties and he said she should have picked Ronald Dorsey up from workforce at 7pm and that she should have been doing her routine checks after that. So the police decided to speak with Ronald Dorsey. They were concerned with his past troubles because he attempted to abduct and sexually assault a woman a few years back. The police asked him about his previous run-ins with the law enforcement. Dorsey said he had urges to sexually assault women when he was younger so he acted on it just the one time. He said at the time when he abducted this woman it was when he grabbed her that he realized he was doing something wrong so he let her go. He made a deal with prosecutors at the time that if he completed a program at a government facility he would serve no jail time. He did tell police he was raised by his abusive father and had no mother. Dorsey spent time in multiple foster homes until he ended up at the Youth Intercept program. The police then asked him about more recent events. Dorsey confirmed he was the only current resident of the program who was living there during the incident of Miss Lopez and the disappearance of Miss Hickson, but he denied any involvement in these cases. When the police told him Miss Hickson was dead, Dorsey didn't say much and he just replied saying, yeah, I figured she's dead. Dorsey did tell police he contacted Miss Hickson on the night of her disappearance and asked her to bring cleaning supplies over to his apartment so he could clean his bathroom. The police verified these messages and Miss Hickson did come to his apartment but Dorsey claimed he didn't see her again after that. The more police spoke with Dorsey, they felt he wasn't being truthful, so he agreed to come to the police station. As they were headed to the police station, it was then reported that the body of Miss Hickson had been found behind the apartment building that Dorsey resided in. When police told Dorsey that they had found Miss Hickson, he dropped his head and mumbled something under his breath. The police continuously asked Dorsey to tell the truth to which Dorsey said, I will, but only if you take me to the police station. Interestingly, they took him without handcuffs. They gave him a sweater because he was cold and they also bought him pizza. On the car ride to the police station, Dorsey said he had made a mistake with Miss Hickson but was not involved with Miss Lopez. He said when Miss Hickson brought over cleaning supplies, his urges took control. He said Miss Hickson came to the apartment. She brought the supplies and then left. Two minutes later, he decided to call her back so he could lure her in. They spoke for a couple of minutes and then as she was leaving, Dorsey put her into a headlock. She tried to mace him but he was too strong to overcome. He started choking her and then a neighbor came to the door by which point she fell unconscious but Dorsey didn't believe she was dead. He opened the door and spoke to the neighbor who asked him to keep the noise down. He then went back to Miss Hickson, put her in a headlock again and she died. He denied engaging in any sexual activity with Miss Hickson. After killing her, he left her body in his apartment. Then he took the work van and he parked it in the front of the office and then placed all of the keys back inside the office and returned to his apartment. He took these measures in a way to cover up his actions. When he returned to the apartment, he dragged Miss Hickson to the wooded area behind his apartment complex. He also said he cut off all her clothing because he didn't want police to find his DNA. He then put her clothes 
and all her belongings inside a trash bag and then put the bag inside a trash compactor. Dorsey told officers when he first told Miss Hickson to come to the apartment, he felt the urge to subdue and assault her. But when Miss Hickson was actually there in front of him, his urges went away. But when she left, his urges came back. The police asked him if he felt better about telling the police and Dorsey said he doesn't feel better because he knows what he did was wrong and cannot redeem himself. When they arrived at the police station, the police told him he wasn't under arrest but they now needed to place him into handcuffs. So then they asked him about Miss Lopez to which he still denied any involvement. The police told him to stop lying and then he spoke about the murder of Miss Lopez. He said Miss Lopez came to his apartment to conduct a check. Then that night, he went to the main office apartment where Miss Lopez was working. He knocked on the door and Miss Lopez answered. He told her he had forgotten to take his medication. As she turned to walk to the front bedroom where the medication was kept, he tried to subdue and assault her. After he strangled Miss Lopez, he took her body and put her inside the old work van. The image you're seeing is where he left the body. When asked about Miss Hickson if he intended to assault her or to kill her, Dorsey confirmed his only intention was to assault her. Dorsey went on to say that if he left the station without charges being filed, he would assault someone else. In the end, on December the 14th, 2018, Ronald Dorsey was sentenced to life in prison for both murders. And this is where I go back to the opening statements. In philosophy, there are two types of thinking. You're either a determinist or you believe in free will. Neither one is right or wrong, but in the case of Ronald Dorsey, he had been in foster homes, he didn't know his mother, his father was abusive toward him. So an argument can be made that these actions were predetermined by all his life experiences. I'm not saying this is the case. I'm just trying to put one argument there. The other argument is, is that despite any of his previous experiences, he still has free will and he still made the choice to do what he did to both of these women. So my question to you is, if you have an individual who is a product of his environment, Dorsey did not choose to be born. He didn't choose his parents. He didn't choose his gender. He didn't choose the environment he'd be born into. He didn't ask his father to abuse him. He didn't ask his mother to abandon him. And I can only imagine how the foster homes must have been for him. But at the same time, as a grown man, he had the option of no. He may have felt these urges and he sounds like a gambling addict where the thrill, the chase of wanting something is as important as getting something. And we all know the key to life is not getting what you want, is wanting it once you get it. But in the case of Ronald Dorsey, whether it was predetermined or whether it was his own free choice, we can all agree that what he did was so heinous, so pointless and served no purpose to the greater good. Perhaps life in prison is unfortunate, but it is a fitting sentence. Comment, tell me what you think.